So we're talking about today polynomials, okay? Polynomials. And what do we know about polynomials? More than anything, they have whole number <coughs> exponents. Okay, polynomials have whole number exponents, okay? So if I take a look at my examples here, just looking at it, if I look at every one of these exponents, those are whole numbers, like, you know, 1, 3, 4, all those, every one of these exponents in here are whole numbers, right? So these are all polynomials. There are different types of polynomials, so let's go ahead and classify what they are. So first of all, the name, just go 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. Now, when you have more than 3, we could call it quadnomial, but then we'd have a pentanomial, and then we'd have a hexanomial, and then we'd have a septanomial. It gets kind of annoying. So anything over three, we just call a polynomial. So anything over three terms, we just call a polynomial. So the first one, its name is just polynomial. That's it. The degree. What's the biggest exponent? Four. It's four. It's just that. It's, it's that easy. The coefficient. What's the leading coefficient? The leading coefficient. What's the number in the lead? Three. It is three, right? So leading coefficient is three. Now the constant is a number without x. It stays it's constant. It doesn't have a variable. So what's the number without an x? One. The one. That's it. So the constant is a number without a variable. It does not vary. It stays constant. Does that, that makes sense, doesn't it? Okay. Um, h of x. It's out of order, isn't it? Now, we could rewrite it, but what's the name first? What's the name of this thing? Yeah, it's trinomial. It's three terms, so it's trinomial. What is the degree? Three. It is three, because the largest exponent is three. Everybody agree with that? So what's the leading coefficient? Five. It is five, because it's out of order. We should have rewritten it, but I didn't want to do that, right? But five should be the leading coefficient we put in front, right? Constant. Easy. Everybody agree? I mean, definitely. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yep. Yeah, yep. Okay. How about the next one? What's the name? It is a trinomial because there's one, two, three terms. It is a trinomial. Yep, yep, yep. Degree? Two. We call those also quadratics or parabolas. But now I'm getting fancy, aren't I? We just call it a second degree polynomial. How's that? What's the leading coefficient? One. Everybody agree with one? Because there's a one right there, okay? What's the constant? Three. Three. Easy, squeezy, lemon peasy. Agree? K of x. It is a binomial because there's two terms. Awesome. What's the degree? Zero. It's one. It is one because it's an x to the one power. So it's a degree one. Everybody agree that's an x to the one power? Yes. So it's well. one. This one's going to be zero. Jackson, you're ahead of me. That one's going to be zero. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, what's the leading coefficient in this binomial? Degree four. What's the constant? One. one. Now, this one's tricky because we would never write this, but you could write it as a zero x to the one power plus five x to the zero power, right? But you wouldn't write that because that'd be silly. So anything with zero x is just not even there, right? But 5x to 0 power tells you it's degree 0. Okay, does that make sense? Why? Because there's no x's. So this is degree 0. It's a monomial. Because there's only one term. It's just 5. It's just one thing, right? It has a degree of 0. It doesn't really have a leading coefficient. So it has none. To be a leading coefficient, it has to be in front of a variable. So it's none. And its constant is itself. It's 5, okay? All right. Now, Number two, simplify. We put x squareds with x squareds. Yeah, AV, question. Did you write zero for none or none for none? Right, how about none? Yeah, because zero is a number. Really good question. Really good question because zero is a number, right? And none means no answer. Good question. Okay, let's take a look. Number two. So you guys know how to do this. We did this in algebra. So are there any other x cubes in this whole grouping? Any other x cubes? Yeah. No. So let's just write down the... 14x cubed, okay? Um, here's a 3x squared. Are there any other x squared? Yeah. yeah, how about one more, right? Which makes a plus 4x squared, right? Here's an x. Are there any other x terms? 
Yeah, I get an X minus an X. What's that going to happen? Zero. Zero, right? So that's just gone. They just cancel each other out. And then I get a 7 and 2 makes a 9. Thumbs up. Easy? Awesome. Okay. All right, number three. Now, the problem with three is you've got to be careful. Some kids are really good at subtracting negatives. I'll say it again. Some of you are really good at subtracting negatives, okay? Some of you are really good at subtracting negatives. But I'm going to be careful, and I'm going to bring the negative 3. Now, you don't have to do this, but this is a trick I always do. I'm going to bring this negative right here through. So I'm going to rewrite it. You don't have to do this. I've just found in my experience that I make less mistakes when I take this extra step. So I'm going to bring the negative 3 before I even go ahead and add this. So it's going to be a negative 3x, a positive x squared, because I'm with the negative for the negative. I'm going to get a negative 2x cubed, and I'm going to get a positive 10, okay? So I'm just going to do this. Don't fall asleep on me, Aaron. Okay, so I brought the negative through. Now, I haven't added or subtracted anything, but when I bring the negative through, then I'm going to bring down the next one, just combine terms. So let's bring this down, 2x cubed plus 4x minus 2x squared plus 3. Okay, now let's combine. I got a 3x cubed. Do I have another x cubed somewhere? Alyssa, do I have another x cubed in here somewhere? Yeah. Okay, thanks, mm -hmm. Alyssa. 2x cubed and a minus 2x cubed makes how many x cubes? Zero. They're gone. Um, I got a negative 2x squared. Do I have any x squareds in here? Yeah, yeah. It's like another one right there. Negative 2x and an x makes a negative 1x squared, right? Cancel those out. I've got a 4x and a negative 3x makes a positive 1x, right? I got a 3 and a 10 makes a 13, okay? How's that look, okay? Okay, we're good. Now, how about number four? I don't see a plus or a minus between them, so what do we have to do? We get a times, we do have times. This is the one you're not gonna like. Follow the way I do it though and it's gonna help, okay? Okay, three x times two x squared is that? Six x cubed, you okay with that? Okay, so okay with the six x cubed? Three x times three x is a positive nine x squared. 3 times a negative 1 makes a negative 3x. Okay with that? Now here's the trick I want to show you. You don't have to do this, but for me it, it works. So I'm going to go and I'm going to get a negative 4x squared, but I line it up. I want to line them up. So I'm going to put my negative 4x squared here. Hopefully that seems obvious why I line them up. Put the squared terms with the squared terms, right? So when you add them, they're all lined up together. Okay, then I'll go negative 6x. So I'll line them up with negative 6x right there underneath. I'm trying to line them up, so I want to add it. makes it sense. And then I'm going to get a positive 2, okay? So I'm just going to add now, right? But I've got terms lined up so that things just kind of coincide really nicely. Okay, that's the only x cubed term, so I'm just going to bring it down. 6x cubed, 9x squared, and a negative 4x squared makes a positive 5x squared minus 9x plus 2. Thumbs up? Thumbs up? Kind of tedious, but easy, right? You guys agree? It's not hard, it's just tedious, okay? Turn the page. Okay, I'll wait for you. Okay. And Gage, give me a thumbs up when you got it. I don't mind, I'm patient, okay? All right, here we go. Now, you might need a calculator. So if you guys need to grab a fancy calculator, take a minute to grab a fit, one of my fancy ones, okay? You're going to need a good calculator. I need one too. Okay, grab the calculator. Okay. Thank you. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Thanks, Avery. Thanks, Avery. Okay, this is your world. This is, I mean, this is what I'm learning more and more as a teacher is anytime we do anything with calculus, you guys are so good. Because all you like to do is push buttons all day, right? So it's your world. True. Even Alyssa's awake for this, huh? Okay, so how do we do this? So if we're going to graph... So I told you they're curvy, right? They're curvy. So I'll give you a hint. So before we do anything, after you turn, go to your window. Okay, go to your window. 
And I tell you what your window should be, okay? So first our window is, think about a normal graph, negative 10 to 10, right? Normal graph, negative 10 to 10, so I'm going to go negative 10 to 10. Normal graph, right? Negative 10 to 10, right? Scales by 1. So I'm going 1, 2, 3, so scales over 1, right? So I change scales to 1, okay? Okay, normal graph, negative 10 to 10, right? Normal graph, negative 10 for the y, 10, so I'm going to go to negative 10 to 10, right? Scales by 1. 1, 2, 3. How am I doing? Okay, so far? Okay. You don't have one? You're sharing. Oh, this, okay. You're good. Uh, sorry. Okay, you're way ahead of me. That's what. Thank you. So then, you want a graph? Well, first we got to put it in. So it's a, it's a P of X, but P of X, F of X, all means the same thing as Y. So we're going to our Y equals. So go to your Y equals. See your little Y equals right there? Go to your Y equals. Everybody have the window, though, first? Everybody good on the window? Okay. Go to Y equals, right? Um, I've got a scatter plot on mine, so I'm going to turn off my scatter plot. I'll show you how you do that. That's in blue. I'll go second scatter plot. I'm going to turn that off. Off. Do you want to show you how I did that again? Anybody have a scatter plot on? Yeah. You go to Y equals, right? Do you see a plot up there? Yeah. So you go to plot like that. Okay, see where I did that? Push enter and just go over and turn it off. So you don't have a dot to dot on your graph. You don't want the dot to dot on your graph. Remember how we did the scatter plot a couple of weeks ago? So my scatter plot's off, okay? So then I go back to my y equals, and I'm going to put in my 2x variable. Okay, my x variable. x variable is right there. x variable. Now to the third power, to the power of. So I'm going to go to the power of. That's right there. I'm going to go to the power of 3. That's x cubed. So I've got 2x cubed. Yep, 2x cubed. Wait, where was the power of? Yeah, my, it's right there. That's that little thing oh. right there. That's the power of, okay? So it takes it to a power of, and then x, and I've got, so there it is, ready to go, right? So let's see what it looks like, okay? How am I doing? Okay. So I push graph, looks like that. You didn't add the minus 3x. I didn't? Yeah, there's negative. Oh, I didn't. I wonder why mine looks so bad. How's that, Jackson? There we go. And how do you change the plot to be a scatter, not be a scatter? Here, I'll, get, I'll take, take care of it for you. I'll get rid of it for you. Okay. Uh, so you want to see the stat plot again? Yeah. Yeah. Are you not doing that? Did you put it in? Let's give her a second. All right. So we graph it and we get this, right? So let's go ahead and take that picture and put it on the graph. Now, a couple of things I see, it looks to me, it really does, it looks to me like it goes through at negative 1, 0, and 1. Do you agree with that? Looking at your calculator, do you agree? It kind of goes through those, right? Looks like it's a height a little bit more than 1. So it looks something like this. doesn't have to be perfect. I just need the shape, okay? It's curvy. They're polynomials. So I just need you to get the general shape. Now, does anybody need help real quick before I move on? Anybody? Anybody need help real quick? Can everybody get this picture? Everybody good? I got it. I got this too. I don't know. Oh, you scared a I didn't see how you see it. So let's put the end of the closet. Everybody got that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and. Okay, are we good? Okay, you guys give the next one a try, okay? See if you can do the next one. So we go back to Y equals, right? And let's get rid of that one. Clear it out, right? And put the next one in, okay? So now x, 
Yeah. To the power, I can't once I start recording it. No, I mean uh, on the calculator. Oh, yeah, the window. Thank you. Thank you. You're a step ahead of me, Jackson. You should be teaching. That's Because I'm going to show that real quick, because I'm going to have to, aren't I? So x to the fourth, subtract 8x squared plus 1, right? Okay, now, I've got a problem. I don't see all of it. So Jackson made a suggestion. So what more, take a look at that picture. What more do I need to see? A lot. What am I missing? What part am I missing? Yeah, the down. The down part. So if I go to my window, if I go to my window, what do I want to do in my window? Think about it. Make it bigger. Make it bigger in which way? The Y. Make the Y minimum. So let's go to the Y minimum and make the Y minimum. Tell me, what do you want to do? Negative 30. Negative 30. Why not? Okay, I like that. Negative 30 might be too much, but it's too much is better than too little, right? Because you'll see it. So Aaron suggested negative 30. There it is. Actually, that was a pretty good window, Aaron. There you go. So again, all I need is a general shape. Looks to me like it goes through at about negative 3, 0, and 3. So I'm going to go maybe negative 3, 0, and 3. Okay, there it goes. Okay. How's that look? I'm a little bit off on that. It should be the same, but you know, so I might try and make these look about the same length there, right? Right? Okay, how about the next one? Everybody agree so far? Everybody good? Okay, how about the next one? Can you do the next one? So, let's go white goals, right? I want to go clear that. X squared. Subtract 4. Okay. I'm going to go back and change my window back to negative 10. I liked Aaron's suggestion, but I'm going to go back to negative 10 because I kind of know what this one looks like. Okay. Graph it. Looks like that. Okay. That, actually, we've done those. That's a parabola. We just got done doing parabolas, right? So let's put that one in. Right. Okay, so that one's going to look like this. There, there, there. Okay, all right. Now the zeros. What the heck are the zeros? Well, the zeros is where it has a height of zero. So the zeros. The zeros are going to be the x-intercepts. Yeah, the zeros are going to be the x-intercepts. They're also values that make it zero. Okay, write that down. Okay, that's why they're called zeros. Okay, the zeros are called zeros because they make it have a value of zero. Of course, if it has a value of zero, it's going to have a height of zero. If it has a height of zero, it's got to be an x-intercept. I'll say that one more time. It's called zeros because they make the problem become zero. If it becomes zero, then it's got to have a height of zero. If it has a height of zero, it has to be an x-intercept. Does that make sense? Right? Okay, so how do you test them? Well, I'm just going to plug zero in. So I think my zeros are at negative 1, 0, and 1. So if I plug in those numbers, let's see what happens, okay? So if I plug in zero into this one, I would get zero. You agree with that? How about negative 1? Would negative 1 make this whole thing be zero? If I let x equal negative 1. If x were negative 1, I want you to think. If x were negative 1, would it make this be 0? Come on. How about if x or x? How about if x were 1? If x were 1, would this be 0? If, this were, if x were 1, would the whole thing be 0? No. So my 0 here is close, but not exact. We're going to learn later how to get the exact zeros. Okay, my zeros, I think, are at negative 3, 0, and 3. If I plug in 3... 3, oh boy. hey, let's use a calculator because that looks just way too hard to do, right? So what would, if I went 3 to the 4th power minus 8 times 3 to the 2nd power plus 1, what do I get? Well, yeah, that makes a big difference. Let's try it again. Thank you. So it's not, is it? Yeah, it's a little bit better, but they're not zero. So what I thought was really a zero isn't really. And we're going to learn how to find the exact zeros 
later. Guess how we're going to find them? What's your favorite thing to do? We're going to find the zeros by factoring. I know you love to factor, don't you? Okay, last example, okay? So a cardiac outpatient, a particular patient, can only be approximated by the functions, blah, 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 okay? So, boy, if I could see this problem, it's going to help me, okay? So let's see if I can find it, okay? So you ready? Can I graph this? Let's graph this, okay? If I can see this graph, I can do it. So could I graph this? Sure. Do you guys know how to graph this? How are you going to graph that? We calculate, right? So let's put it in the calculator, okay? On y equals clear 0.1256x, because you don't have a t, x to the third power minus 0.22x squared, because you don't have a t, plus 2.33x, because you don't have a t, okay? I put that in. And graph it. Well, I don't see all of it, do I? Let's think about the window. Come on, we got to be smart. Let's think about the window. Think about the window, okay? Think about the window. I want you to be really smart. Think about the window. Think about the window. I want you to be really smart. First of all, I don't like this number here. I don't like that sign right there. What's bugging me about that symbol right there? That little, what's that little dash thingy? Come on, what's that little dash thingy? Negative, what's wrong with that in this problem? In this problem, you can't have negative time. Can you have negative time? You can have negative time. You take medicine and you can say, well, yeah, an hour ago. Well, an hour ago, you didn't take the medicine, did you? So let's go zero. Let's go zero. Now read the problem, they give you a hint. Read the problem, they give you a hint. Which should be the window. Which would be the window? Mm -hmm. 23, because we're only going to let things go for 23 hours, right? So let's go to 23. And now let's graph it, okay? Ah, that's a better window, isn't it? All right. So it says find f of 0. Now, you're watching. Here's a cool button. You could just take your cursor back and forth, but there is a trace button. So find your trace button. Find your trace. Trace. Does it, everybody hit trace and hit zero enter. What's your answer? Zero. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I hit trace. Oops, I hit trace. I really did. Stop that. Hit trace and let's hit three. Enter. What's the answer for three? Five. Point one six one two. Yeah, well. Why didn't I mention it with this? Let me stop my recording and I'll take a look at it. Okay, so what I'd like to do, you guys have the calculus in front of you, right?